In this video, we are going to focus on stop loss orders and trailing stops. And we're going to consider this in the form of a math problem. So number one, Gordon buys 100 shares of stock XYZ at $20 with a stop loss set to activate at 18 combined with a sell limit order at 17. With his exit strategy in place, Gordon goes off on a one month vacation. Rachel also buys 100 shares of stock at $20 with a trailing stop set to activate at 10% below market price. She too goes off on a one month vacation. In three weeks, the stock rises to $40. One week later, it falls to 25. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the ROI or the return on investment for each individual trader. So first, let's talk about Gordon. Gordon set a stop loss that's going to activate at $18. That is the activation price of the stop loss order. So right now the stock is trading at 20. If it were to go down to $18, the stop loss order will be activated. At this point, the system is set to sell his shares at $17 or better. So $18 is the activation price. $17 is the sell limit order. So once it hits 18 or below, the system is going to try to sell his shares at a price of 17 or better. So it might get sold at 1790, 1760, 1740, somewhere between 17 and 18, his stock will be sold. And so that is the purpose of a stop loss order. It is designed to protect a stock trader from heavy losses. In this case, the most that Gordon could lose is $3 per share. The system is going to try to sell his stock at $17 or better. Now, the system is not perfect. Sometimes the stock can fall so fast, especially if there's a lot of sell orders in place. A stock can fall so fast that it can go past the $17 limit order before that order is fulfilled. So that could happen too. Sometimes a stock can gap open the next day way below the limit order. So there's still an element of risk here, but for the most part, for liquid stocks, this usually works. So the most that Gordon could lose on this trade is 15% of his original investment. Now, a trail and stop order is different than a stop loss order. A stop loss order, all it can do is protect you from the downside. It protects you from losing too much value in your shares. Whereas a trail and stop order, it not only protects you from the downside, but it also allows you to profit from the upside in case the stock were to go up. So in this particular example, both individuals buy the stock at $20. Three weeks later, the stock goes up to $40. And then one week later, it falls down to 25. Now, in the case of Gordon, his stop loss order is not activated because the stock never reached $18 or below. So assuming that he closes his position at this point, he spent $2,000 buying 100 shares at $20. And then he sold 100 shares at 25. So he's going to receive 2,500 for that. So his gain for this particular trade is $500. Now to calculate his ROI, it's going to be the profit that he generated, which is 500 divided by the cost of investment, which was 2000 times 100%. So if you cancel the two zeros, that's five over 20, which is a quarter or 0.25. So he's looking at a return of 25%. Now in the case of Rachel, she invested $2,000 into this trade as well. The question is, at what value did she sell her shares? Because she didn't sell it at 25. The system, the trail and stop, automatically sold her shares at a certain price. 
Now, she set a trailing stop set to activate at 10% below market price. So when the stock is trading at $20, the trailing stop will activate at 10% below $20. That is, it's going to activate at $18. Now, when the stock moves up to 30, the trailing stop also moves up as well. So 10% below 30, 10% of 30 is $3. So the trailing stop would sell her position at $3 below 30 or at 27. Now, as the stock moves to 40, the trailing stop also moves. It follows the stock as it goes up. So 10% of 40 is $4. So the trailing stop will activate $4 below 40 or 36. Now, the beauty of the trailing stop feature is that it only moves as the price of the stock moves up. It never moves down. So let's say the price of the stock drops to $37. In this case, the trailing stop will remain at $36. It's not going to go below that part. So it locks in the profit while the price of the stock goes up. In the case of Gordon, his stop loss doesn't move above 18. It remains at 18. So it's going to sell his shares once the price of the stock hits 18 or below. So now when the price of the stock falls at 25, at this point, Rachel, her shares would have been sold at $36 by the trail and stop feature. Now, as the stock reaches $36, the trailing stop will be activated and the system will try to sell her shares at the best price. It could be $36, it could be $35.90, it could be $35.50, somewhere close to $36. But for the sake of simplicity, we're going to use $36 in this example. So we're going to say that the trailing stop feature sold Rachel's shares at $36 times 100 shares. So she's going to receive 3600 at the end of that trade for a net gain of 1600 And as you can see, her gain is significantly higher than Gordon's gain. Her ROI is going to be 1600 divided by 2000 times 100%. And so she's looking at an 80% gain. Now let's consider the second scenario. That is, if the stock closed at 16 one week later, as opposed to 25. If the stock were to close at 16, then Gordon's stop loss order would have been activated. Once it reaches 18, the sell limit order will be activated where it's going to try to sell his shares at $17 or better. So we're going to say that he gets out at $18. If he gets out at 18, he's looking at a 10% loss. He put in 2000 and now he's selling his shares at $18 times 100. So he's looking at a $200 loss. So note that Gordon was right in buying the stock because it did went up. But because he took a vacation, he wasn't there to sell his shares. So Gordon is looking at a 10% loss, all because he didn't have one of the best exit strategies out there. His exit strategy was good enough to protect him from excessive losses. I mean, he could have sold his stock at 16 instead of 18. So this exit strategy protected him from excessive losses, which is good, but it didn't allow him to participate in the gains of the stock when it moved in the right direction. Now, Rachel had a better exit strategy because not only did it offer her downside protection, but it allowed her to participate in the gains of the stock. She was able to sell her shares at 36 and not at 18. Now, imagine if the stock, instead of going up to 40, it went down to, let's say, $10. In both cases, Gordon and Rachel would have sold their shares at 18, ideally speaking. Gordon's 
stop loss order would have been activated at 18 and Rachel's trail and stop would have been activated 10% below 20 which is at 18 as well so in both cases the stop loss order and the trail and stop offer downside protection but the advantage of the trail and stop is that it locks in a profit if the stock moves in your favor so now you know the difference between a stop loss order and a trail and stop order and how they could be used as an exit strategy when trading stocks now for those of you who want more video content on stock related material and options as well feel free to check out the links in the description section below I'll be posting more content there uh, for those of you who might be interested so if you like this video don't forget to hit that like button comment below and also subscribe to this channel thanks again for watching